Good morning, my dollar bimbos. I am back, the villainous valuer of vintage volumes vying for viewership. And I kind of wanted to do a spotlight on this one issue. Uh, I pulled this one from my last five pack from uh, the Kingpin of Union Square. So check him out. He's on the southwest corner of Union Square selling comics damn near every day. Um, so go check him out. And so when I pulled this book out of the last five pack, I kind of spiraled about this idea that I've been buying Brave and the Bold in dollar bins for years, and I was always surprised by how complete of a story was being told in a single issue. And I talked about, I want to say it's Brave and the Bold 192, might be 194, 192 or 194. It's a... Uh, Batman Superboy issue, and it just has this very in-depth story, and it man manages to tell it in, what, 20, 22 pages, you know? Pretty great. So, I decided to give this one a read. I was hanging out at my favorite bar, check out Shade in West Village, and I, I mean, immediately I was drawn right in. The story starts here at a checkpoint between East and West Berlin, and it turns out uh, Green Lantern is defecting, uh, so he's going to, I guess, join the commies. Uh, and it turns out what actually had been going on was uh, Batman had been captured. And so when he goes, they immediately, when, when Green Lantern shows up at the same border, uh, they immediately take his ring, question him. He says he's defecting, but they don't believe him. So he goes in, kind of just lets them capture him. He kind of tries to convince them that he's on their side. Uh, and then uh, they eventually say, hey, by the way, we have Batman. And to prove our loyalty, uh, you will kill Batman. Well, there you go. Now, it kind of all becomes clear what's really happened in this, I guess, flashback. Uh, Batman sort of got himself captured just so that he could undergo uh, basically uh, enhanced interrogation methods. Uh, by, you know, the communist government uh, to see if they could break Batman. And so the idea was they wanted somebody on the other side of it uh, who was sort of with the commies, the Lantern, uh, to kind of be able to hear their... Like, so they would describe what they're doing. So they kind of... You know, so they have the Green Lantern with the torturers saying what they're doing. You have Batman going through it. And all of this is just done deliberately so that the U.S. government can learn about how, uh, the, you know, I guess the communist interrogation methods were, right? That's really what this is about. So it turns out, the, you know, Batman wasn't captured, you know, he let them capture him. Green Lantern wasn't defecting, he was going there on a research mission. Uh, but the fun part is they, uh, they couldn't break Batman. So when they had gotten to the point where it should be his core, you know, he should be, they should be broken, right? He should be uh, basically spilling the beans. Uh, all that's happening is he keeps repeating some gibberish over and over, which sounds like Joe Chill, Joe Chill, Joe Chill. So basically, like, he's created this false wall in his brain, which is the trauma of his parents being killed. And, and he basically says, nope, to get past... Uh, Batman, all you get is Joe Chill, Joe Chill, Joe Chill. So it was kind of fun. It's It was basically, you know, all of this is about uh, torture and withstanding torture. You know, it's a very interesting uh, storyline, very adult, and uh, a very complex story. And what is it? There are 15 issues, 16 issues? You know what? There's, sorry, 16 pages? Uh, oh shit, it's 17 page total. Right? All of this story is happening in 17 pages. And they're giving you a 17 and a half hour Justice League movie that doesn't seem to tell all that much story. Right? Like, this is, this is the weird part about narrative decompression is every medium can tell a, an adult, you know, a, a very sincere, meaningful story about complex issues that are, you know, facing the world today. But by the way, like the issues of, you know, torture, psychological manipulation, you know, governments and espionage, like all of these are still issues that, you know, on the front page of the New York Times every day. And 
you know, this, this comic book came out in 1977. So there you go, you just, we have this medium that works, and I keep buying new comics that don't have as much story, you know? They'll be 28 pages, they'll cost me $6.99, they'll tell me that they're better, and just nothing happens in them. I mean, this is, yeah, I just keep wanting to stress, this is 17 pages of story, there's nothing here. And it was truly engaging, it gave me a lot to think about, it gave me a lot to talk about, Oh, and it only cost me a buck. Go get those bins, guys.